Hello YouTube, welcome to the Common Investor and welcome to um, to my Trading212 uh, update. So um, yeah guys, obviously as you know the market's been crazy the past couple of days. Uh, tech sector, I wouldn't call it a crash per se but um, call it like a correction and stuff. Uh, but you know, um, I think that happened for about two to three days. Today it seemed to, it seemed to be like a little bit of a rebound. Um, I think the Nasdaq is up about, you know, like one percent or something they're just under one percent today so um that's looking good guys um so yeah i don't think i've ever put up a video of my put maybe i put it up once of my trading to one to portfolio um as you can see a lot of money has kind of gone into this uh probably a bit too much to be honest with you. i think i stretched myself a little bit for this um and also don't get it twisted um i made some bad bets on this which i talked about before um, because I have actually, this portfolio at the moment is down uh, £570, mainly due to a company called Wirecard, um, and also a loss I had on Dropbox. Um, that was just down to me com over committing myself, basically, to Dropbox. So I had to sell off um, and reinvest in other shares, and Wirecard was just a bad bet, basically. Everyone knows about that. Um, so at the moment, as of today, I am um, the portfolio is valued at fourteen thousand two hundred twenty-two, um, two hundred and twenty-six pounds. Uh, I'm up two percent. Um, I mean, as of two days ago, I believe I was down probably like two percent as well. So the market's basically corrected itself, and I think the way the portfolio is set up has really helped with. Um, uh, Essentially, let's see. Yeah, so a couple of days ago, yeah, I was down about 2.3%. So, yeah, it's gone up quite a lot uh, to, within the past, what, today, basically. I think really that's just down to the way I've set up the portfolio, um, just using my pies and everything like that. So, I'm not going to lie, I've got a lot of holdings, probably too many holdings. Uh, I think I've got about a hundred or so, hundred and two um, holdings. This is gonna come down, um, but I'll probably say it should probably come down to about you know probably like tw um, ninety holdings at some point. I'm just gonna try and fine tune it a little bit. I just take away some um, some stocks essentially. So ninety is quite a lot to be honest with you. Um, but essentially what I've kind of done is just basically built um, individual type ETFs or pies um, uh, or individual ETFs within the pies and um, just kind of use that to um, to invest essentially so I've got one two three four five, seven pies first one is my um, emergency fund want to try and build up to like 20k um, obviously I have some money in savings right now and um but you know i think that the general plan is um you know just to kind of get the money within the actual um, investing community or invest into the actual you know investment port so that um yeah i think it's just better that way because interest rates in banks are pretty much next to nothing um and also with this actually my holding Oh, that's quite interesting. Okay, so my holdings at the moment, this I think to be honest, I think the Vanguard FTSE All World ETF is really, really good. Um, out of when there was a, when everything was like turbulence and everything like that, the only um stock I had that's really been literally consistent and um had minimal losses was basically this FTSE All World ETF. So um. Yeah, this has kind of been tailored to be quite a safe one. Essentially, I've got you know, the Footy Award ETF, the Berkshire Hathaway um, sh um, stock, um, the f uh, Invesco uh, S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility, and um, the JP Morgan um, Emerging Bond uh, ETF. So all of these are pretty good, actually. And this is definitely the most stable um pie out of all of them so obviously it's the least funded as well because it's the least likely to actually grow but it's definitely the most stable 
so this is kind of be what I will use for my emergency funds um, yeah so the next is the fire portfolio so the fire portfolio is basically US dividend paying stocks um, so I've got about 32 stocks in here you know your typical stuff with GSKs you know Lever, Admiral um, you know so Admiral is the one that no one really talks about but they got really got they pay an annual dividend of uh, one almost one pound so that's pretty good um, for those of you that don't know XP power is a UK dividend um, paying company that pays quarterly uh, so I think right now we have uh, uh, so GSK pays quarterly Unilever pays quarterly uh, I think Games Workshop might pay quarterly and XP Power pay quarterly. No one really knows. I don't think anyone knows about XP Power, but the other ones I think people pretty much know about. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you just got your generic uh, companies. Hikma Pharmaceuticals is doing pretty well. Um, obviously, this is not going to be as detailed as my uh, free trade portfolio. And for the record, actually, guys, my free trade portfolio I've actually sold most of my um holdings in there just kind of took my profits um and uh you see the rest when i created the next portfolio um, update took some of my profits there uh, took some money out essentially i took some money out because i dipped into my emergency fund to um to fund my trading to one two so the money i'm taking out will go back into my emergency fund i just kind of top it up essentially um yeah because the emergency fund you always want it to be there last thing you want to do is to dip into the emergency fund um so yeah you got your generic uh companies i added uh wh smith to uh, yesterday it's dropped to eight percent but it's a pretty good stock actually um from a dividend point of view um so i didn't see that one coming um uh, taylor added to the rmp for simon i'm basically waiting for that to drop a bit more so obviously there's a little bit of a the leasehold um problem with um i think it's Poseidon, taylor wimpy uh countryside and i think barrett maybe so potentially that's going to impact them and if they do drop then i will be adding Poseidon to um to this i mainly because of the high dividend um high dividend uh, annual dividend it pays basically which is think just over one pound so yeah i mean fair enough i've been talking about dividend growth and all that stuff but you know i kind of i thought about it and um just kind of looked at you know um is like where i want to be in the next 10 years or 15 years and for me to achieve um where i want to be in the next 10 to 15 years essentially i have to i can't really be looking into stocks that you know um that pay uh have a low dividend payout or uh, have a low dividend yield um, even though they are dividend growth companies i mean some of these some of these basically um like karma i think i've left in there um yeah but potentially this spirit communications i'm going to get rid of it and soft cats as well going to get rid of it um they are good companies uh, but for me, the the yield, the yield and the div and the and the annual dividends are just too low for me to kind of be where I want to be in the next ten to fifteen years. So I think that's kind of my focus. Um, but still, you have all these stocks here as well. They still grow the dividends. Um, every everyone apart from I think GSK grow the dividends. GSK haven't grown a dividend for a while, but it's still a pretty di good dividend payout in terms of uh, 80 pence, um, 80 pence uh, over a year basically, or an annually. And obviously they pay four times a year or quarterly. Uh, so that's a fire portfolio. That's up about 2.44%. So as you can see, the portfolio is basically geared towards, you know, the fire movement type thing, where, you know, um, essentially you'll be able to at some point anyways i should be able to leave off my um the the dividends that um that come from this portfolio or at least the dividends will be able to supplement my lifestyle to a certain point um the next is um growth the uh, also and also one more thing the file portfolio is 
primarily you know um consists of uk companies due to um, for tax reasons um you know that 15 percent tax um just want to try and avoid it because that basically eats into your profit i've got another um portfolio um for us stocks and eu stocks as well uh, i'm not going to be too worried about that but i think the main my main money or main cash is going to be driven towards the um, the fire portfolio and this should always be ahead of all the other um pies as well so you've got growth etfs you've got um yeah so i was got the iShare global um global clean energy one that's consistently consistently doing well um yeah i think that i don't know why essentially i think it's just one of those etfs that's just really yeah i think it's just the clean energy basically um industry you know renewables and all that is just pretty much hot right now so um yeah that etf is doing really really well now the ICS uh p 500 information technology etf i think is a really good growth etf um it has a nice mix of um you know of information technology type companies um and he's also got um companies that really haven't you know um appreciated as much um after or well, during this whole tech you know this whole tech madness essentially so there's a nice balance basically um i think i rather own this than the right now than the eqqq the nasdaq uh, eqqq or qqq um then you got scottish mortgage investments um obviously oh there you go i'll see you too uh. so obviously um this is uh everyone should know about this by now um it's kind of up and down essentially uh i think mainly just due to you know the the swings of tesla but you know it's, it's still doing pretty well you know if it does go down i tend to uh, to buy a bit more um uh, so i bought a bit more over the past i've spent i just i've actually spent quite a lot actually over the past couple of days just averaging down um uh, which is why I had to dip into my emergency fund to to do that, but then I knew that I was gonna recoup it from um, getting money from uh, my free trade, and also this has kind of helped me transfer. Eventually, what's gonna happen is gonna the funds in free trade. I'm gonna end up transferring it to trading two one two. I use it within trading two one two. Um, yeah, so you know this uh, I'm gonna be selling off most of the stocks in, in free trade um, when they are in the positive. Um, and the final one is the FTSE Emerging Markets as well. So that's looking pretty good as well. So for this fund, for this pie, I am up 1.13%. Um, so kids, there you go. So this one is just, you know, I've called this kids essentially because these are just long-term holds. Uh, these are basically, um, because all these companies are pretty much overvalued. But, you know, it's kind of thinking in the next, you know, five, four years essentially. Um, potentially some of these uh, companies would then be at the actual value that we're kind of determining that they are today so that's how you have to kind of think of this so that's why I just kind of called it kids so you know I'm just gonna basically just keep on investing in these um, and um, hopefully they just kind of grow over time and um, but yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't really um, pay this too much attention i've just kind of gone in and selected stocks that you know that uh you know just kind of did well or have been doing well and sectors that are doing well as well uh so twitter is a pretty good one i think i got twitter at a good price i got twilo yesterday and immediately i got it it basically shot back up um so i think this this twitter's formed a very good resistance at the same point um but yeah all the others are looking um pretty good um and considering there was a big sell-off um it's just not looking too bad obviously i did average down as well so that's why that's probably helped and in reducing my um or keeping my weighted average um kind of reasonable uh it should be two yeah, percent so next one is reits so um during the uh COVID 19 door we're still in it anyways but around that march time march april i went through quite a few reads um i just kind of saw the ones i wanted so i got realty income ltc properties american tower um store capital all solid reads 
um, DGT Realty Trust, which is it's quite funny that one's a bit down, but that's definitely going to go up a bit later. It's a pretty good read. Focus on data centers. We got um, Tritrex big um, big box read. Um, that's a UK read. You got Safe Storehouse, um, Safe Safe Store Holdings. You got Segro, um, Prologis, and um, you got Public Storage. The, the reads I prefer out of all of these is actually pub, public storage. Um, what I might do is actually maybe allocate more of the pie to public storage and take down some of these ones that aren't doing so well. Um, yeah, because I think public storage is really, really good. Um, a lot of people don't seem to have public storage, but yeah, it's, um, I think it's a fantastic company. It's, it's a self storage um, company. Similar to what basically what self store does, uh, self store is the biggest in Europe, I think, and um, public storage is the biggest in America, and um, the cash flow really well, and uh, they got a dividend, uh, annual dividend of about four dollars, uh, which is pretty good as well, or maybe even more. Is it four? Hold on. Uh, so let's just have a look, and as you can see, it's still. Um, I'll say still within good, uh, good value. Where is it? Uh, eight dollars actually. Yep, it's eight dollars. Bet you never seen that before. I've never seen a, a, a stock that has an annual payout of eight dollars, and the yield as well is not too bad actually. It's a uh, what three point seven seven percent. So yeah, that's one to look out for. Um, you just have a look at the the balance sheet. Um, profit margin for three percent, pretty good. Um, and look at that low liabilities. Usually for REITs, the liabilities are pretty high, but this is quite low. So, yo guys, I th this is a this is a short banker for for me to be honest with you. But yeah, have a look at and see if it's something you might be interested in. Um, yeah, but for me, that's uh, my favorite REIT. Next will obviously be Rosie Income because it pays on a monthly basis. And that seems to be the most popular REIT out of everything else. So this is my ride or die. Ride or die stocks. So essentially, these... It's actually doing pretty well, actually. It's 3.15%. So these are basically just mostly solid companies, mate. Absolutely solid. Like, I, these are, like, companies I feel like I can hold for the rest of my life. And they will still be okay. Um... So you got Honeywell, Kimberly Clarks, you know, Amgen. Amgen pays a dividend of about six dollars. Um, and all of them are dividend paying companies as well. Uh, and you know, I, I think that at the end of the day the hope is um you know the 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 pies that are basically dividend paying will just kinda um for, they'll kind of fund themselves and have a life of their own and hopefully at some point i would even need to bother putting money into these um because obviously we're going for the fire movement but you know i don't really plan to stop working um for me i guess fire it just kind of means just doing my own thing essentially um not necessarily stop working um so yeah we got um air product chemicals great company um and a lot of these companies are, are, as well i feel like companies that are really well managed um so we've got microsoft apple we've got visa um they obviously the yields are quite low but you know they um they're still dividend paying companies you've got nvidia as well in there you've got caterpillar walmart uh, medtronic jp morgan and chase the only bank i have i was thinking about another banking stock and another energy stock to put in the only energy, energy stock I could think about that I really, really like was Next Era Energy. Um, didn't really like any other ones I saw. Um, well, obviously, that's really overvalued right now. So, if that happens to drop, it did drop a little bit. And it, it didn't just drop to the level I wanted it to. Uh, but we'll keep on watching that and see, see what happens. Uh, what's so, we yeah, got Intel, Starbucks. It was between Starbucks and McDonald's. Um, I think McDonald's doesn't just tend to go up as or increase as much as I would like it to. Um, so I just kind—I basically just chose Starbucks. Um, I felt it's got more, um, you know, 
stock price appreciation built into it over at McDonald's. And obviously they, they will still go the dividends as well. Um, if, you know, hopefully if this pandemic, you know, kind of dies down and things go back to normal. Costco, you know, just a nice solid company. Um, yeah, Rush. Another one as well, I don't think a lot of people know about Rush, but Rush, jeez. They pay your dividends, boy. <laughs> pay a dividend, boy. Um, it says dividend. It doesn't say anything about dividend yield, but um, they definitely pay a dividend of nine, well, I guess nine francs or something. Um, that's the highest I've ever seen, you know? It's, um, it's a bit expensive, to be honest, but from a stock price point of view but from a valuation point of view it's not because i think i checked on simply trade and this is valued at about you know 400 or so so yeah from that perspective it's really it's not overvalued at all so yeah i just definitely going to be trying to get more of this essentially and um yeah rush might be one to look at if uh, if you're interested in um high paying dividend stocks another thing rush only pays i think once once a year so that's a bit of a that's kind of why it's it's not top it's not with kimberly clark excuse me <clears throat> and honeywell um so if you notice the european stocks um just they either pay once or twice a year um you know snatch snyder electric um novo nordic um, adidas sap so which is why they're a bit further down so essentially what's gonna happen i have I have a lot more time to um, to invest in these companies and their ex dividend dates are very close to their actual dividend payment dates as well. So I just have a lot more time to accumulate cash within these before the dividend dates. Um, but yes, you know, they're, they're great companies. Um, yeah, so that's the ride or die. So yeah, I don't really plan on changing this. To, I think I've got about 20, 20 companies. I don't really plan on changing this, to be honest. Just kind of stick with this for the for the rest of my life and um yeah just kind of pass it on to the kids i guess at some point i guess we'll see um then yeah you've got the speculation uh pie so the speculation pie surprisingly is the one that's doing really well or is that's doing the best actually um but you see why um so we've got fastly cloudflare and plug and plug power um Ooh, that's interesting. Um, I've never seen a blackout in the UK before. Uh, not a blackout, but I've never seen a power cut. That's a first. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, where was I? So you've got Pinterest. Uh, Warcourse, as everyone knows, that's been going through the roof. Um, I was going to put a lot of money into Warcast, but I was thinking, you know what, I think it's a lot of risk because it's all pending on that USPS contract. And I was just trying to stick to my guns. I started investing in this as a speculative stock and just stick to investing into it as a speculative stock. Um, if not, um, when it was about, you know, 10% up, I was going to put a lot more money and I'd had a 20% gain. Uh, but yeah, I just decided not to. And for a merger too, um, this was from a YouTuber. Um, I think he talked about a company called Tattoo Chef. And apparently, um, I think that merger is going on. It's going to be happening pretty soon, which is driving up the price. A lot of people don't know about it. But I think once it becomes public, that's going to go up a bit more. Um, got Series Power Holdings. Um that's how that's you're gonna i think that's gonna do pretty well as well invite um dropbox I should invest in dropbox because i really do believe in the company i just it's still growing it's just not growing as fast as people expect it to i mean it's growing at about 60 16 percent um on an annual basis so that's still pretty okay growth but it's just not as much as people were expecting and it's pretty much probably just down to um down to Dropbox uh, model, they don't really drive to get people, you know, registered or subscribed. They just basically let people do what they want, and there's a lot of 
free offerings essentially um from dropbox um so yeah but i still believe it's a good company i mean obviously they have a new um they have something they, they basically have a company called uh hello sign it basically does the same thing that doc sign does and doc sign is the shot up to only you know to to the heavens basically it's dropped a bit now but you know if doc sign's gone up that much i feel like um dropbox should go up that much as well <laughs> to be honest with you because hello sign and doctor sign basically do the same thing um, I think it's just the way Dropbox probably monetize Hello Sign, uh, but they, I think they added more as a free op, as a free addition um, to the package to make to add more value to the package, uh, not necessarily charge people for using that service. Um, and obviously, they have a like a multi, um, like a multi multi-platform interface now where you can cut you can use um slack you can use zoom you can um use google sheets uh you can use microsoft uh um applications microsoft like pro processing applications as well um which is all within their own system so that's uh for 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 industries that basically um run that you know that interact with a lot of different clients uh or customers that have different that generate um documents or you know systems from different with different platforms then you know having that dropbox interface would be quite useful so um, i don't know how they're gonna plan are they gonna monetize it essentially um or how they're gonna you know try and get customers to to sign up to that um, i think it's something that's still not known in the market and it still needs to catch some traction um but you know i think a lot of companies have um kind of capitalized on you know um uh, you know creating a platform for other people to do work on essentially you know you got uh you know something like airbnb uh created a platform for people to you know to rent rooms uh within their their houses change the game um uber for cars uh, i can't really think for there are quite a few of them i can't think of them um, right now essentially but there are quite a few of them dropbox is trying to make that i uh, just try to do that um with a with a cloud system that allows the use of multiple um of multiple packages to uh, to do work related items or just for teamwork for to create a nice team working environment a multifunctional team working environment so about that's about enough for dropbox we'll see how red eye red eye is in the next couple of years so blink charging um, essentially just create charging pots for electric cars um they dropped quite a lot as well um during the um the over the past two days the Ata box has gone up quite a bit um smart direct club that is literally flying um do not know why i've not researched that yet but um yeah that's doing pretty well nokia has a 5g play Glow mobile that's um, a mobile gaming platform um it's just one of the ones i've seen that would basically be good value and obviously upwork um i should probably put a bit more in upwork to be honest with you and i wouldn't really call it a speculative stock but i think all my i didn't want to add it to my other pies so i did it in here i'll move it up a bit more it seems to be doing quite well as well so yeah guys that's um that's essentially my trading to one to portfolio and yeah today is doing pretty well i don't know where it's going to be tomorrow um but i'm very 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 happy with this portfolio um and don't really plan on adding or taking anything out of it uh did i go through yeah um yeah, I don't really plan on adding or taking anything out of it. To be honest with you, I'm a bit tempted to um to maybe stop doing portfolio updates because I want to delete. I just want to set my auto invest and basically just delete the apps because it's very distracting for me. Um, I'm definitely a lot less productive now. Um, 
because I'm always checking my <laughs> trading to one to um, ISO account on my free trade account and before I know it time just flies away um, so I think I've set this up now and potentially just going to go into delete the app and just let the auto invest uh, feature do its thing um, so quite interesting to see what's going to happen after like a year uh, of you know of just kind of auto investing um, unfortunately I can't do that because obviously this is content for YouTube um, so I'm not going to delete it just going to keep it going and um, leave it rolling yeah so um, that's um, so that's it guys for today um, hope you enjoyed the portfolio review and um, okay what I'll do is well, I'll show you how much I've got in dividends in this portfolio which is not too bad actually got uh, 26.67 pounds but the dividends, uh, I don't own Penon Group anymore, and I don't own Avon Robot. Avon Robot is, is a good company. I just thought it was overvalued at the time. Um, Skywalk Solutions, I moved that to my free trade account, and um, and I still own Nordic, still own Realty Income, Costco own, um, Tate and Lyle own, JP Morgan, Morgan and Chase own. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, guys, that's the uh, that's the portfolio. So yeah, I hope you enjoy that. And um, if you like the the video, please subscribe or you know like put put your um, or click the like button. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. All right.